In Kazakhstan, the craft developed over the centuries, leaving a legacy of unique products of artisans, amazing wealth of artistic imagination, and the perfection of form. A respect for one's heritage, traditional cultural values, these are the main tasks of the current generation. National art crafts of Kazakhstan are an integral part of culture. They embodied centuries of experience in the perception of the world, preserved profound artistic traditions. Folk arts and crafts originated in ancient times, and like any other type of art, at first everything was not realized as art. It's just that people did not see those things that they use in their daily lives, creating, as we now say, the subject environment, the traditional design of a home, a suit, household utensils, tools, and weapons. All the working people created this objective world, reflecting in it their social and everyday way of life. The unique perception of the world, the concept of happiness and beauty, and a unique national character. Almost everything in the work of the master is dictated by century-old traditions. The choice of materials and methods of its processing, the nature and content of decoration. The combination of traditions and innovation, style, features, and creative improvisation, the collective principles and views of the individual. Man-made products and high professionalism are characteristic of features of the creative work of the craftsman. The unique artistic products of the master are widely known not only in our country. They are also known and highly valued abroad. They have become symbols of the national culture, the contribution of Kazakhstan to the world cultural heritage. Folk creativity is governed by immutable laws, and most importantly, it is open and expressive of the ideals of beauty concealed in the soul of the Kazakh people, thanks to which it is the most direct evidence of the talent and creative power. Decorative and applied art is a complex and multifaceted phenomenon. It includes a variety of directions, types, and forms but all of them are united by a combination of practical expediency of products with natural beauty of their external appearance coming from the surrounding nature. From ancient times, the whole life of people was literally permeated with the desire for beauty and harmony with surrounding nature. The house and hearth, the furniture and tools, clothing and utensils, even toys, Everything that the hands of the folk artist touched embodied their love for their native land and an innate sense of beauty. And then ordinary household items became works of art. The beauty of their form was complemented by decorative ornaments in the form of images of people, animals, birds, life scenes and other ornamentation. The masters in their work used what nature itself gave to them wool, leather, wood, clay, and bone, as well as iron. Nature constantly served as the main source of inspiration and embodied in their works images of nature. The master never copied it literally. Infused with folk fantasies, reality acquired at times a magical, fantastic feature. In the past and fiction, it seemed inseparable. It is this peculiarity of folk decorative and applied creativity, its inimitable expressiveness and proportionality, inspired and continues to inspire professional artists. Decorative and applied arts is the result of creative works of many generations of craftsmen. It is one in its artistic structure and unusually diverse in its features, which manifests itself in everything from material selection to ornamentation and artistic images. Born in the midst of farmers, 
pastoralists, hunters, folk artists throughout the history of its development is associated with nature, the laws of its renewal, and the manifestation of its life-giving forces. A deep understanding of the material with which the master works allows him to create many things like perfect works. Wood and clay, stone and bone, leather and wool, all of these are processed and decorated in accordance with their own natural properties. This ability to use the natural qualities of a material was embodied in the artistic and technical techniques that allow the most rational design and decoration of items with ornamentation or plot images, combining in them the real prototypes with the author's bold imagination. After all, behind everything, the talent, work, and unanimity of many people is the ideal. In this, the whole nation is hidden. Like nature, folk art selects only the best and polishes it for centuries, creating in truth the perfect technology, forms, ornaments, and color. Over time, it acquires the character of tradition. Once the beautiful thing must be preserved, this is the demand of people. That's why they talk about the works of folk art as a monument of history and culture. We buy products of the masters not because it is necessary for farm life. Instead, it fascinates us with the nobility of form and grace. For this beauty, we, as it were, release the thing from the performance of its direct function and put it on the shelf as an ornament of the interior. Today, the decorative side begins to predominate the works of folk art. So what kinds of folk art are more developed? Let's get acquainted with the most famous of them. Embroidery is one of the most common types of folk art. The ornamentation of folk embroidery goes back to ancient times. It retains traces of the time when people inspired the surroundings of nature. And placing images of the sun, the tree of life, birds and female figures on their clothing and everyday objects as a symbol of a life force, happiness, fertility, they believed that they would bring prosperity to their houses. In the process of historical development, the Kazakh people developed their own specific patterns of embroidery, a peculiar technique of execution, unique color solutions. Embroidery did not require complicated equipment, a needle, thread, and a canvas. That's all it takes to embroider and sew clothes, to perform elegant products for decorating a home. In the distant past, symbols and ornamentation also had rituals and a magical role. Certain lines had their own meanings. Ancient nomads expressed with wavy lines heavenly water, with vertical lines rain, and with dots seeds and plants. There are several types of ornaments. Geometric ornaments consists of points, lines, and zigzags, circles, and stars. From the world of nature, man took elements of vegetables and animal ornaments. Find motifs from fantastic and real animals and birds, or separate parts of their figures, horse heads, deer horns as well, form a zoomorphic or beast-like ornament. Anthropomorphic or anthropoid consists of female and male figures. By ornamentation, it was possible to determine both the time and the region where this or that thing was created. Modern artists create new forms of ornamentation, including both ancient elements and modern symbols.
Felting is the procedure for making felt, and it is derived into several stages called felting. The process itself is based on the entanglement of wool fibers between themselves. When making felt, the master uses the technique of wet felting. It turns out that no matter how carefully the colors of wool are chosen and laid out, the felt still falls a little bit in its own way. Therefore, each felt master adapts to himself the already known technique, using a mixture of techniques to create one product and devising his own method of felting. In products from a stone, the specificity of a material, its hardness, strength, beauty, and color diversity determine the wide application of a hard stone in the jewelry industry. Masters work on the creation of jewelry, relying on the richest traditions of this art. Artists seek to reveal the natural beauty of a stone using unrestricted surface in which the shades of color natural inclusions are particularly clearly visible. Bone is a material widely used in ancient times. Folk masters were able to identify and use the remarkable properties of this material for artistic purposes. Due to its hardness, it's suitable for creating a variety of artistic and household products. After bleaching and degreasing, a simple animal bone acquires a beautiful white color. The metal products, various in their artistic and technical techniques, the art of metal processing has ancient traditions. The emergence of this or that region was due to a number of historical, geographical, and economic reasons. Work with metal has always been considered one of the heavy and courageous types of craft. Jewelry art is one of the brightest manifestations of artistic creativity of the people. The earliest of their samples were discovered by archaeologists in the Stone Age. The jewelry of the masters were marked by artistic refinement and perfection of drawings. Archaeologists, in addition to finding products, found a significant number of foundry molds for making jewelry. Traditional jewelry technology on the territory of Kazakhstan are chasing, embossing, stamping, grain, and filigree. In the jewelry arts, beliefs and social relations as well as traditions are reflected, and therefore jewelry at all times was an integral part of the folk costume. A specific feature of the products of folk art is the traditional natural materials which are used for its production. The aesthetics of the materials are learned by the masters in their particular everyday practice, in the process of making products. 
It does not require any special form of training. Properties and materials possibilities are felted by hand and are perceived by the eye, awakening in the soul of the master the desire to create. The manual creative work of a folk master naturally combines various aspects of human activity. The refusal to create man-made objects of everyday life means virtually stopping the basic tradition of folk art. This is a specificity of art crafts. Despite the modern mechanization of labor, art crafts still retain their features, which distinguish them from among other industrial productions. Today, we often acquire goods of art crafts not for utilitarian purposes, but for the sake of beauty. And these products create manual labor carrying in themselves. They do not allow the soul and the heart of a person to turn into stone. The artistic processing of the tree was already well developed in Scythian times. Since the tree is not always preserved in the ground, archaeologists do not often find samples of ancient woodwork. The techniques of processing a tree is quite diverse, carving, turning, painting, burning and incrustation. One of the most ancient techniques, gouging, was used to make household things and musical instruments, such as a dumbra or kubus. Cutting, except for the axe, various incisors were used. This helped the decoration of the items for various purposes that were cut out. Carving is one of the oldest techniques of artistic decoration. The technique of flat carving is often combined with an inlay, finishing pieces of wood, metal, stones, leather, and the like. Many crafts have long existed as auxiliary types of economic activity, which provided an opportunity not only to maintain the material level of a family, but also developed the aesthetic taste, produced an eternal craving for beauty, and so characteristic of everyday life. Folk art products preserve the energy of the nation, so it should not be forgotten that no matter what the new artistic values are created by professional artists, Folk art tradition remains an inexhaustible source, capable of nourishing the hearts and souls of people forever. In ancient times, they said, every tree has its roots. Cut them off and the tree will perish. We receive spiritual strength from the past to improve the future. And now, when the interest in folk culture increases, when we are going back to the basics, we are looking for answers to the pressing questions of today's life in the experience of the past.